Today we're going to look at the 7 Artisans 35mm 0.95 lens for Fujifilm X-Series cameras. Hey guys, my name is John Sparkman. I'm a photographer and a little bit of a videographer here in Birmingham in the UK. If it's your first time on the channel, uh, I basically deal with things to do with weddings, to do with flash photography, uh, Fuji cameras, all the stuff that goes with it. So if you like that, stick around and subscribe and stay around to the end. In previous videos, I have compared quite a few manual focus lenses to go on the Fujifilm system. Most of them need little adapters. I did the Helios 44 F2. I've done the Nikkor AIS 50mm 1.8 lens. Those are great because I kind of had those lenses lying about and uh, a cheap little adapter, 20, 30 pounds, could stick them on the camera. They do have their, you know, their uses. Manual focus lenses give a specific kind of appeal, especially the older 40 year old lenses. They're not as kind of crisp and sharp as the newer day ones. You can get that kind of blooming or ghosting or weird artifacts in your pictures that might appeal to yourself. But this is my first manual focus lens specifically designed for a Fujifilm camera. I say kind of specifically designed. They are uh, a series of lenses which have had a different uh, back mount put on them. So I picked up this manual focus 35mm 0.95 lens for Fuji specifically on Amazon. It's about £260 and the link is down below if you want to get one yourself. Now we have to do a little bit of maths. Uh, 0.95 is awesome because if you think in kind of full frame terms, you know, hardly any lenses go down beneath the F1 mark, especially under a thousand pounds. But we're dealing with a crop sensor camera. Every number that you deal with is times by 1.5. So a 35.95 comes out to 50 millimeters, 1.4. I've definitely owned several of those in the past. I've had the Sigma, a DG version 1.4. I've had the Art Series 1.4, and I think that came in at you know 800, 900 pounds. Chunky little lens. Uh, this, you know, 260 quid for that focal range is incredible. Also, in previous videos, I've talked about the manual focus modes on a Fujifilm camera, especially the X-T3, which I shoot. And now I set it up and I've actually got it going now with the 10 to 24 lens I'm, I'm doing this video with. The ability of a mirrorless camera to use the electronic viewfinder, uh, basically anything that is in focus and has a nice little red kind of outline around it makes it really easy to do critical focus on these cameras. So that makes it very easy to use this lens as well. Now the construction is pretty much metal throughout. I can't really see uh, any points where it's not metal. Uh, even like the back bayonet mount is some kind of metal in there. There isn't any kind of waterproofing. Uh, and it is one of those lenses that, you know, the more you zoom in, it actually gets a little bit bigger. Uh, so, you know, you wouldn't be able to maybe uh, stick this inside a matte box or something that's very close to the front. Uh, you might end up pushing things away. Interesting things about this is the uh, kind of the lens hood. It's not a clip on one or a screw on one. It just kind of sits there like it's got the aperture ring on the front and this is clickless. So it's very smooth to kind of glide between one number and another. Goes from 0.95 up to f16. And then behind it, we've got the manual focus. And we've even got a little gauge there, which is very similar to the old kind of uh, Leica lenses, realistically. Uh, it's kind of giving me these, these retro vibes going on, especially in this matte black color with the red writing. It's, it's a real nice looking lens. Uh, now, because it's a manual focus only lens, there's no uh, chips or electronics or motors inside. It means that you have to set your camera to be able to shoot with the lens off, uh, which will allow you to then mount a manual focus lens. None of the information is going to get transferred through to uh, your camera to do with aperture or anything. So you're really going to have to rely on kind of knowing what is the best kind of exposure for your scene. One of the issues that I've had with it is when I'm pairing this with a second camera, if I'm doing a wedding, uh, that I cannot sometimes quickly get the same aperture on both lenses. Perhaps I wanted to shoot a scene and I know on one camera it's f2.8. This one I've kind of got to twist that dial and because it's clickless I've just got to kind of kind of guess really what's going, what's going on. We've got a little dot at the top but yeah it's it's a little bit of a 
it's a bit of a guessing game. So you might not be able to get kind of matching uh, apertures. Clickless is great if you are a videographer. Uh, those are so you can get those kind of apertures in between other apertures, which is perfect. So you can dial in specific, specific exposures. Potentially not as good if you're like a studio photographer and you would be the kind that would set up your camera's aperture and camera settings first, then adjust your lighting uh, to match it because you've got the power of the flashes. Uh, that's a circumstance where clickless uh, aperture ring is probably not the best for yourself. And I did find myself, uh, because I use a dual camera strap, one of the Holdfast Moneymaker straps, I did find whenever I had the camera down to my side, picked it up again, I'd actually kind of nudged this ring uh, kind of away and I was always at f16 somehow. Maybe it's just the way I'm holding it, but for me uh, that was quite a pain because you'd bring up a camera for a quick shot as you do in weddings, and you'd be at the wrong aperture. But it is quickly just a, you know, twist it the other way, find out what's bright enough, using that EVF and uh, snap away. If you were thinking of getting this lens for something which doesn't have an EVF, um, it might be a bit more of a challenge. You might end up kind of chimping a little bit more, kind of taking a shot, looking at it, adjusting, taking a shot, looking at it. This is really handy with an EVF, but uh, that's about the limitations that we have there. Build quality is fine, and the lens itself, the the kind of the color rendering and the sharpness is comparable with Fuji X series lenses. I'm going to put it out there. This is a really, really good, really competent kind of on par lens with Fuji series. So I had no problem matching the shots I took with this uh, than with an 18 to 55 or a 50 to 100 lens. You know, in post, it's actually um, quite a nice surprise to do it. When I've uh, done weddings and portrait sessions and stuff with the Nikon lens, always came out really red. Uh, you had to kind of uh, go in, you had to adjust the color casts, so spend a bit more time on post. Uh, again, coming as a wedding photographer, time is money. I don't want to be spending an extra hour or so editing my pictures because it's not just shift the magenta back to green and all's good. It was a little different in each one on the Nikon. So that has been absolutely alleviated with this lens. Now it's pretty hard to say who this lens is for. I would say it's definitely a little bit too um, telly, a little bit too long for street photography at 50 millimeter equivalent. I'd be more towards the 35, 24 millimeters for street photography. I would say it's probably also not great for uh, cinematography. There are use cases where you would get, say, a, a, a 50 millimeter equivalent and you would uh, mount that on a lens, but generally you want to go wider as well. But that's where those clickless apertures really shine at that point. Absolutely amazing for portraiture, uh, using that really sharp, really vibrant colors, uh, color accuracy, all this stuff is brilliant. Being able to get down to that 0.95, so that 1.4 equivalent, will let you choose in lower light, you'll get the bokeh that you're after, uh, the separation from the background is gonna look brilliant. But it's not the fastest lens to work with, as I said, so maybe if you're using it as a daily for events or kind of uh, weddings, probably not the best. Bring it out for those special occasions where you want to get that crispy kind of bokehlicious stuff. Maybe you didn't want to buy the Fuji 1.4 or the, the, you know, the silly F56 1.2 lenses, which cost three, four, five, six times. Maybe this is like a, a step up lens, get you in the portrait, get you in the bokeh game. And then using the money you return on that, you can pick up yourself one of the big chunky X lenses with the, uh, with the autofocus, which just makes everything so easy. I absolutely love the lens. Uh, I have already shot probably 800, 900 photos on it. I used it as my second on the last wedding I did. I also went out and I took some demo shots, a kind of sunset with Kyle uh, in the, you know, the woods at the end of my road where you know I live in the countryside pretty much at this point. And uh, yeah, setting sun, I could still uh, you know just twist open that aperture, get that really, really low 1.4, 0.95 on there and uh, get some nice bokeh without having to push the ISO or drop the um, you know drop the shutter speed. If you're familiar with my channel, I do use flash quite a lot. So me personally, um, using very low, incredibly low apertures is not really my style anymore. I prefer to shoot at a kind of a consistent 2.8 f4, somewhere around there, and then light if needed. I can sculpt my light, I can do what I want. I'm gonna get everybody if I'm shooting groups in focus. Whereas, uh, and this is just the nature of shooting with very low aperture lenses, you might miss critical focus. And you know, in a time sensitive manner where you cannot go back and repeat a shop, like weddings, maybe not the best to stick on your camera as a second. 
definitely usable, uh, but maybe mixed, and you have to really make your own decision up on it. If you want to pick one up, as I mentioned, the link is down below and it supports the channel. If you like this kind of content and want me to keep producing this stuff and uh, reviewing content, maybe you want me to check out the 50 to 140 lens that I have just picked up for the wedding season, stick around and subscribe. I'll see you in a future video. Thanks.